so much more that some I can explain. The infinite opening up to infinite possibilities of that at any moment, any moment, regardless of what appears to be, your life can completely change. At any moment, anything can happen. We can see it here in this, in this life. But now, the going to a restaurant and sitting in a restaurant with your friends, it's becoming like a privilege, like, like gold. It's becoming really precious that you can go to a cafe or restaurant, sit down, and a waiter or waitress comes and serves you, and you don't have to wear a mask. And now you're so excited that you can do that. You never thought about it before, that you're excited to be able to go in a restaurant and eat food. Something that was taken for granted in the past. Very, very simple things that we never thought about it. So all of a sudden, everything changed. A world that appeared to be free has turned into a different world that appears to be restricted with fear, worry, danger. But it doesn't matter. This too will change. This too is not going to last because even this is not real. None of it is real. It, it's all appearances. It appears to be this, and now it appears to be this. None of it is real. Neither as this. Neither as this one. They're not real. They all appear and disappear. They come and go. They're not real. So we can't take it seriously. The only real thing is that which doesn't change. That's the only real thing. That which does not change. And that is the presence. You can call it presence. You can call it you, the observer, the one that is observing, the witness. You can call it consciousness. You can call it the space. It's not an object. So the more we bring our attention to that part, the more the quality of our lives changes because peace comes. Ramana Maharishi, who I consider him as my spiritual grandfather, and uh, he lived in southern India in Tiruvannamalai. And uh, for 40, 50 years, he was living in his ashram at the bottom of the uh, Arunachala, the mountain of Arunachala in southern India. And he, he was there during the Second World War and during the Indian. Uh, when India was going through its revolution and wanted to uh, separate itself from the British Raj, and but and many many different groups would go to him, uh, and this was during the Gandhi. It was a very powerful time in the world, Second World War. Half of the world was in ruins and and war. There was shortages of everything. All kinds of different things was happening. It was not a fun time and it was a dark time. And this being, this master, this teacher was very still. He never identified with any of the stories. He 
just stay quiet. He was silent and he was still, regardless of what was happening. And there was news coming in like the Japanese are going to invade India. He was still, he was not reacting. There was news that the Germans may come and take over and he wouldn't, he wouldn't move. There was people coming and telling him we need to eradicate the British out of India. He would not react to it. He would just like stay very still, firm into his being, not reacting to any of it, staying centered. And that was a very, very strong time in the world. And now we are in another world turmoil with the pandemic and all the stories that come with it. And for the few of us who have come across this understanding and this information, this is our moment of transformation. This is the moment that you have an opportunity to transform and go to the next level. Yeah. Right now. To go beyond the good and bad, to rise above the good and bad. Because there is the evil and there is the good. The two forces are fighting with each other right now in the world. The dark and the light. In the world of duality, in third dimension. The good and the bad. So now you have an opportunity to rise above the good and the bad. To go beyond that. We have to master the mind. It's the mind that takes us into all these darknesses. So the master the mind is not a mental exercise. It's simply recognizing. It's a recognition. It's an understanding that if you can observe your mind, if you can be aware of your thoughts, then you are not your thoughts. You are not your mind. If you can watch your thoughts and see them. And the thoughts come and go all the time. They're always traveling into your, your mind. Are they really yours? Did you manufacture them? Or they're just passing through. So what a lot of people do are trying to do mind control, trying to think positively, working on their thoughts, but they don't realize they're strengthening the mind. They're strengthening their enemy. But if you're simply aware and watching your thoughts as a bystander, then what kind of power does your mind have on you? Because it cannot be yours and it cannot be connected if you can observe it. If you're aware of something comes and goes, then you cannot be that thing because you're watching something comes and goes. It's very much like you go to a cafe in Paris or somewhere in Europe. You're sitting on a side cafe and you're watching people come and go. You're always watching things come and go. Well, if somebody's walking by, you're not that person. You're watching that person coming and going. 